Now, what kind of story do you guys want to hear? Oh, the big one. Oh, scary. Okay, now, if we tell some Bigfoot stories, I want promises that you guys aren't going to get too scared and run away. <laughs> Promise? Can we can we talk about Bigfoot? Yeah. No, nobody's going to get scared, right? Nope. Vona? I'm going to be scared. <laughs> Brittany? Great. <laughs> okay. How many here believe in Bigfoot? Me! Me! Okay, by the end of this story, some of us might believe in Bigfoot. So, <clears throat> this goes back a number of years to one of my best friends. And his name was Dange. And that's all anybody ever called him, Dange. And he had a big mustache. He looked like Wyatt Earp. And he was in slow motion all the time. And whenever you looked at Dange, he was always walking around and he just, he always had to have his mustache in perfect shape and he just moved slow. <laughs> and he always went hunting with me and a bunch of my friends. And this particular hunt though, I had drawn a tag in, a, in another unit. And so Dange was going back down to the haunted Vinequin country with a couple of his kids to go hunt. And he went down to a place where we always went for years. And he put, our, he put the wall tent up and he had the horses tied in the willow trees and the creek running and the mountain cliff above him. And he said, everything went perfect. And he had everything done for the night. And he went to go to sleep. And he had his two kids in the wall tent asleep. Now, a wall tent is a big canvas square tent that hunters hunt in a lot. And anyway, the way this tent was set up, it was set up in a big square like that. And there was a wood stove over here in the corner. And then Dange was on a bed right here with his two kids right here asleep. And outside the tent in the willows was the horses tied up for the night. And then out here was a big full moon and a big sagebrush flat to the dark mountains over there where who knows what was in those trees in the darkness of the night. But Dange had everything asleep and everything quiet. And Dange says, you know, it was just about that time of night, about midnight. And he says, I'm in bed. And he says, I'm laying in my bed and I've got my hand on my gun that's under the pillow for any booger mans. <laughs> and the kids are asleep. And it was just that time of night that it was just quiet. And you could hear the, you, wait, I hear a phone. <laughs> that must be Dange. <laughs> Don't answer it. He'll tell, he'll say I'm not, I'm lying or something. Don't talk to Dange. So anyways, Dange says he was just about asleep. So if you can picture Dange with that mustache and he's laying there and his eyes are closed and he's just about asleep and it's quiet. And then all of a sudden, the horses start snorting. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you're camping and you're asleep like that, you're immediately awake, but you're not moving. Your eyes are awake. You're aware of anything that's moving out. And he just says, I can hear the horses stomping, snorting. And he says, automatically, he says, I'm looking at the door of the tent. And there's a shadow coming towards the tent. And it's coming towards the door. And it stops right in front of the door. And Dange is laying in the bed right there. And he's thinking, his mind's going 100 miles an hour. 
Who the heck is wandering around in the middle of the night? He says, wouldn't be a warden, wouldn't be, can't be a lost hunter. The hunting season hasn't even started. And he says, the shadow or the big whatever it was, walks up to the door, stops, bends down and parts the door and looks in. And then shuts the door. <laughs> now that's the important part, because Dane showed me how that monster walked. People don't walk like this. <laughs> and I said, really? He goes, that was the craziest thing. I says, what was you doing? He says, I was laying there with my hand on my gun, laying there in bed thinking, what the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I couldn't move. I just froze. My hair was sticking straight out. He said, my hand froze on my gun. And I'm just, he says, and I can't move. <laughs> and the horses are still snorting and stomping. And he just keeps thinking, what the hell was that? <laughs> I'm going, when did you get up? <laughs> he says, when the horses calmed down, finally, he says, and then my adrenaline calmed down, my hair laid back down. He says, then I, all of a sudden I could move. And he says, I got up, I grabbed my flashlight, my gun, he says, my hat, and he says, and I walked out of the tent, which is this way, oh, out of the tent. And he walked out of the tent, and he looked around, and he tried to find tracks, and the ground was too hard, and the horses now are calm. I said, well, what'd you find? He says, I couldn't find nothing. He says, so I'm starting to calm down, thinking, eh, maybe that was nothing. And he's out here looking, you know? Finally, he walks back, and he says, it wasn't until I walked right up to the door of the tent. And he says, my flashlight started to look up the door. And he says, I was looking. That was an eight foot pitch door. Whatever looked in that tent had to bend down. And he's looking, he's going, I don't have to bend down. I can't even reach the door. Was it Bigfoot? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Well, I believe in Bigfoot. 